the world of watches is full of stories that we connect with a piece from the past, may it be historical or personal. And there's also the history of the sum of the parts that encapsulate our passion, the watch itself. That can be very adventurous, I would say, with a vintage piece. And the watch that I want to show to you today brings both to the table and also poses the question of how you define the authenticity of a vintage watch. Or another question, could you enjoy a Franken watch? I would like to take some time and tell the whole story of this Certina Chronolympic automatic from the late 70s. My name is Jan and you're watching the Time Channel. Many shy away of buying a vintage watch because it takes quite some research or knowledge if you're looking to get an authentic piece in a great condition and price. In that regard, this could be a cautionary tale, since there are some aspects about my watch that are definitely not Certina-like. For example, why is there a Mido crown and case back on this one? But digging deeper into the brand's history, we can find an explanation for all of it, and more on that later, which ultimately led me to buy this piece, which others might consider a Franken watch. If you haven't heard the term Franken watch yet, it's a reference to Frankenstein, a monster which is an accumulation of parts not originally meant to be together, and it is usually used to describe a watch where the buyer expected something more authentic and ended up with a timekeeper that might look like the original, but has a certain amount of parts that were either not original in the term of production date, so maybe from a newer version, or from other watch models entirely. Some modified beyond recognition, others a little bit more deceiving. Sounds like a horror story, but doesn't have to be. If every detail about the watch was made clear beforehand by the vendor and the price is therefore acceptable, everything's fine. And this watch right here is a story just like that. But first, a quick recap of the brand's and model's history. Certina was founded in 1888 in Grenchen. At first, it was named Grana, short for Granacus, Latin for Grenchen. The name changed a bit around and after 1938, it was only named Certina which again has its own roots in Latin, Certus being safe or sure. They loved their Latin, I guess. The Chronolympic model is part of Certina's lineup since 1968, all of them sporty chronographs. The model line was very important to Certina and rose to fame when the brand outfitted expeditions, namely a Japanese team in 1970 ascending Mount Everest, climbing nearly 8,000 meters in two months where one of the team, Yuichiro Imiura, would set a world record when he came back down nearly 2 kilometers at a maximum speed of 172 kilometers per hour on skis, only with a braking parachute to keep him alive. Remind you, that climbing expedition was no easy task back then, claiming the lives of eight members of the crew due to the harsh conditions. And Miura himself lost control on an icy patch after skiing those two kilometers and was heavily injured. The skiing run was captured on film and became an Oscar winning documentation in 1976, which you can find on YouTube and a link in the description. It is called The Man Who Skied Down Everest. Most people connect Rolex with everything watch related towards Mount Everest, but anyway, that's a story of how legends are born, and Miura-san wore a Certina DS2 Chronolympic during the whole thing, which reportedly survived the harsh conditions of the expedition. Now, those models were all hand-wound, until in the second half of the 70s, this particular model came around, housing an automatic movement for the first time. The Certina 674 or Valjoux 7750 chronograph movement. This happened already in an era when the quartz crisis began to rear its ugly head. And in order to battle those crises, the Swiss watch industry again came together and formed a larger group as they so often did. The already large ASUAG group or Allgemeine Schweizerische Uhrenindustrie AG, which was founded in 1931 to stabilize the Swiss watch industry as a whole, created the General Watch Company in 1971 to manage the production of complete watches, aside from its various parts manufacturers. Part of that General Watch Company or group were initially Edox, Eterna, Oris, Certina, Technos, Mido, Rado, and later on even Longines. 
very famous names in the industry. I think you might know where this story is going. The last four of that list all came out with a particular version of the chronograph that I have right here, all powered by the Valjoux 7750 and housed in the exact same case, but different dials, hands, signage on the crown, case bag and rotor. Therefore, it's not very surprising that someone, and sometime in the history of this particular watch, maybe chose parts of the Mido version as replacements on this one. This still makes the whole package not authentic anymore, but it, in my opinion, tells a great story of how the watch industry was made up and managed to survive in those harsh times. Considering all this background information makes me even more fond of this one, but I get that purists might find this off-putting. So after a brief detour into the history of the watch model and brand, I would like to talk about the piece that I have right here. It has a stainless steel tonneau shaped uh, case with 42 millimeters diameter um, without the crown and also 42 millimeters from lug to lug. It is 14 millimeters in height, has a brushed top of the case I would say with a um, sunburst pattern and the sides are highly polished and angulated towards the main crown. It is a simple crown so not screw down and in my case as I told you it has the Mido signage. It has a mineral glass which is unfortunately a little bit scratched up in my case as you might see on uh, some of the shots and I have it on an aftermarket black rally or racing strap with white stitching and a simple pin buckle but I think that matches quite well to the vintage look of the watch. So what captivated me the most at first glance of this watch was the stunning gray blue dial with the two off-white subdials at 6 and 12 o'clock with their black hands while the small seconds hand is white and has only the Sertina logo in the background giving the watch a two rather than a three subdial look at first glance. The 30 minute counter has additional red accents for the five minute intervals and the central chronograph seconds hand is in matching red. The hour and minutes hand are purely in a rectangular shape as well as the hour markers. And both the markers and the hands have loom on them but unfortunately as it is with the 70s pieces, the loom is deteriorated in this one. So on the outer rim of the dial or the reot, you have uh, two scales. One is a pulse meter, which goes from 12 o'clock to three o'clock and helps you measure somebody's pulse in a short period of time. And additionally, you have a tachymeter scale starting in between three and four o'clock and going around the dial until 12 o'clock. Additionally, we have a day date window at three o'clock. My day is shown in the French language and I think that um, maybe some of the discs might have been replaced here because the date and the day have not the same background color. So let's have a quick look at the case back. Even though there is not a whole lot to talk about, as I told you, it has a simple stainless steel case back, but with the Mido signage in my case. And also you can see here the reference number 0900, which is the exact reference number that the Mido model of this watch had. So inside we have the Valjoux 7750 doing its work in an early version of it. It was produced by a company within the Ebosch SA holding, which can be recognized by the shield-like logo close to the balance wheel, which then contains the letter of the specific company within this holding that produced the movement. In my case, the Raymond Frère SA, that's why it has the little R on it. They were from Libiu, Switzerland, and they existed since 1901 and later became the original Valjoux SA, who brought forth this movement legend. So this earlier version of the Valju 7750 only sat on 17 joules, while you might know the more modern versions with 25 joules. This one also has several plastic parts like the stopping lever for the chronograph or the bearing of the chronograph center wheel, as it was typical for these first versions. It has roughly a power reserve of 42 hours. It features a hacking function and additional manual winding is also possible and it has the frequency of 28,800 beats per hour. I've seen some of these models having a Certina branded rotor 
And I also know that some of the early ones uh, did not yet have that signed one. But I think a version with the signed rotor would definitely fetch an even higher price. Speaking about it, my little Frankenstein right here was fairly cheap at 800 euros. Other versions complete with the correct Sartina case back and crown can go for 1400 to 2300 euros. The higher prices usually get you an original box and papers as well and an original bracelet which is really really nice. Now it's up for you to decide. Can you accept a vintage watch with some well odd parts that make it unauthentic as a whole? but also provide you with such a large chunk of history of how the different brands grouped together to survive during the quartz crisis? Is it just a question of price to you or would you not be able to enjoy it at all? As with all things in this hobby, it is a very personal decision, since you will be asked seldomly about the thing on your wrist and I can guarantee you that no one would notice the Mido crown if I wouldn't point it out as I just did to you. I'm still in love with this piece now for two years. A love that might have been a tiny bit greater if I had the truly authentic version, especially with that sweet bracelet, I have to admit. But those are very, very rare and it is often not even a question of money, but rather that you cannot get those perfect models at all. I'll leave it at that. Hope you enjoyed this vintage story and would love to hear your comments on this piece. See you in the next one.